Isn't it wonderful how this amber fruit transforms into this delicious and sumptuous looking palm fruit stew that keeps you wanting more? If you want to know how this palm fruit stew, which is equally called banga stew or ofaku in Igbo, is prepared, then keep on watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For the preparation of this palm fruit stew, here are the ingredients used. Here is the key ingredient, which is the palm fruit. Of course, there will be no palm fruit stew without palm fruit now, Abby. <laughs> Here are some cuts of beef. You can use any part that you like. I am using it in addition with some cow tripe, which is equally called shaki in Yoruba here in Nigeria. Here are some mackerel fish, which is already cut and washed. Banga stew that does not have any fish inside. Is that one banga stew? Mbano. You can use any fish of your choice, but I personally love mackerel. So here are some plucked scent leaves, which is equally called in Chuanwu or Efiri in Yoruba. Here are some plucked pumpkin leaves, equally called Ugu in Igbo. So here are some red and yellow scotch bonnet peppers. You can use as much as your taste bud can handle. <laughs> here is a native spice, which I call Ogiriokbi. I call this spice small but mighty because it has a strong and distinctive flavor and taste. I urge you to use it in any native recipe you are making. So here are some prawns which is called opolo. These are the dried ones. They are usually expensive but they are worth every penny. <laughs> so here are some dried crayfish. With all of this fish, it is certain that this banga stew is going to be a banga. <laughs> So here are some onions, red onions. The secret to making really tasty banga stew is using enough amount of onions. It adds extra sweetness to the dish. Also, don't forget the seasoning cubes and the salt. So now that the ingredients has been introduced, let's go over and start the preparation. So start first by washing the palm fruits with some water and be sure to take out all the shells from the palm fruits. Be sure to wash the palm fruits well in order to wash away any form of sand from the palm fruits. I usually wash it for at least two to three times. That way, I'll be sure there are no unwanted particles or sand. And once you are done washing the palm fruits, take out your time to remove all of these shells. Don't flush it down your drain. If not, it is going to clog your kitchen pipes. If you are new to this channel, you are most definitely welcome. My name is Uche Cynthia and I'm a lady that loves to cook. I do hope you enjoy watching my content. And if you like what you see, do not hesitate to subscribe to this channel. Once the palm fruits have fully washed, put them into a pot and add enough water to cook the palm fruit until it is tender. That is the back of the palm fruit. I usually cook my palm fruit for at least one hour. Most times I can even go as much as an hour 30 minutes. That way, I'll be sure that the flesh is extremely tender and it will be easy to extract its juice. So while the palm fruits are cooking, boiling and doing its thing, go over and peel your onion. After peeling, wash the onion and cut the onion into little bits. Also, if you are enjoying this video, please click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, that is for all my OGs that have been watching my videos and turn on your post notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I post a new video. So here are the onions all chopped up. Quite a lot, right? <laughs> so in a pot, add some onions. Seasoning cubes. And then some salt. Add a little amount of water. Cover the pot and place it on the stove and allow it to boil. Once it is boiled, add the mackerel fish. And while you are doing this, do not cluster it together. Give it a little space so that the mackerel fish doesn't cluster itself together and then in turn break. And once you are done adding the mackerel fish, Cover the pot and allow it to simmer for 5 minutes on low heat. The essence of doing this is to release some fish stock. Once that is done, open, 
that is after five minutes open the pot and flip the fish to the other side so that it can cook as well do it gently to avoid the fish from breaking and once that is done cover the pot and allow it to still cook for extra five minutes on the other side so once it is done cooking go ahead and set it in an oven rack for grilling I like doing this step because I love my mackerel fish being grilled but you can skip this step if you want but personally I would advise you do it look at how beautiful this mackerel fish is <laughs> so here are the mackerel fish set for grilling I'll go over and then place that in my oven micro oven so in the same stock add the cow tribe this is because the cow tripe is tougher and it has more cooking time. Allow it to cook in the fish stock with some onion too. And still do this on low heat. Allow it to simmer on its own juice for 10 to 15 minutes on low heat. <laughs> this is after 15 minutes. You can see the amount of liquid that the cow tripe released. So now go ahead to add the beef. And after adding the beef, add some more onion you can see the reason why i said we need lots of onion for this recipe <laughs> and once that is done just give it a quick stir and then cover and allow it to still simmer for extra 15 minutes on low heat <laughs> once it was 15 minutes just go ahead and add some seasoning cube and then some salt to taste and allow it to still simmer in its own juice don't add extra water you might say what kind of process is this but the essence of this is so that the meat is going to be tasty so once that is done stir and then cover the pot and allow it to still be on low heat for extra 10 minutes so this is after all of the plenty serere has been done just go ahead and give it a quick stir you can see the amount of stock that the fish and the meat and everything released so go ahead now and turn off the heat and then set the meat aside you might wonder ah this meat and all is not yet tender yes they aren't the rest of the cooking time will be done later just keep on watching to see how that is done so cover the meat and then set it aside so going over now to check on the pan fruit by now it will most definitely be tender so just to check it just take one and press your fingers on it like so and once you press it and you see that it is soft and the oil is extracting for it then definitely you know the pan fruit is ready for extraction so to begin the extraction process pour the content into a sieve to drain out the remaining liquid and once you are doing this do not forget to have a warm water on the side so once the water is drained out of the pan fruit Pour it into a mortar and pound until all the fibers are fully separated from the palm nut. This is another form of arm exercise. <laughs> Who says you cannot exercise while you are in the kitchen? Make sure you do everything hot hot. You don't want this to get cold. If not, you will not get the most out of the palm fruits. So here is the palm fruit with the fibers fully separated like so. Then you know that it is ready and it is time for extraction. So to do this, I am pouring the content into a black bowl. You certainly don't want to use a white or a colored bowl for this process because it usually gets it stained. And I will equally advise you to do this in your kitchen sink because this process gets a whole lot of messy. <laughs> so I'm pouring some warm water into the mortar and I'm rinsing it with my hands. And after doing that, I am pouring it back into the content filled with the palm fruit, which is already smashed. So I'm pouring some warm water over and once that is done, I'll go ahead and start pressing on the fibers. This way, I'll press out all of the juice so that I'll be sure that everything is all out. Definitely, you need to get your hands clean. And if you don't want your hands, like if you're that kind of person that you love fixing nails and all of that, you can wear a gloves for this process so that your nails don't get all messy. So that is the fiber like so so i love to repeat this process at least twice that way i'll be sure that everything is well extracted from the palm fruits <laughs> so once that is done i'll go ahead and then pour it into a bowl i'm using the pot in this case i went ahead to put the sieve into a pot and then pour the content like so going ahead to still press it so that everything is all out 
so these are basically the palm knots after the fibers are all separated so that is the first extra so i'll go over to set that aside so now i will do a repeat of the process i usually do this twice and be sure that you are using warm water for this process do not use cold water so that the extra does not saturate so I'll first of all rinse the palm knot like so so that is the palm knot if it was in the village this palm knot you dare not throw it away after this process is done just go ahead and set it in the sun and allow it to dry and then later it will be broken to extract the kernels but this is not a village so we are going to go ahead and throw that away so you did that same water I used in rinsing the palm knot I'll go over and rinse the fibers too like that and I'm pouring in some water too and once that is done you can go ahead and throw the fibers but if it was in the village too as well you dare not throw the fibers you leave these two under the sun and allow it to dry and it usually use them to set fire yes back there in the village but here we are going to throw it away so once that is done i'll go ahead too and still pour it into a sieve to extract it and also to remove some unwanted particles from it like so so here is the first extract and then here is the second extract if you find my videos helpful don't hesitate to share my videos you might just be helping someone you know <laughs> so go over now and pour the extracts you can see the first extract so thick and luscious <laughs> so go over now and pour it and as you're pouring it be sure not to pour that down part because there are still some particles in it then go over and then pour the other one you can see how less thick this one is too as well so once that is poured into a pot remove the sieve and then add in some onion yes the remaining onion just share it into two parts and add the onion reason why i said lots of onion is needed for this recipe <laughs> add as much as enough onion that you can add the more the onion the better so once that is added just stir it and then leave the pot open do not cover the pot for this process make sure you leave it open and allow it to simmer so once that is simmering i will just go over and check on the fish so here is the grilled fish already grilled so i will just set that aside so now that that is done and while the mixture is still boiling over i'll then go over and then start processing the peppers and the rest of the ingredients so i'm starting with the pepper in the same mortar but you can use a food processor if you like so once the pepper is pounded like so just add the remaining part of the onion and still keep on pounding and once that is done add the crayfish and keep on pounding as well this is a whole lot of arms exercise i know <laughs> so once that is done then go over and then add the obey in the fire i have a detailed video where i did it i think one of my early videos you can go and watch that if you want to know how that is done so once all of this is well processed blended like so then you know it's ready so now I'll go over and then blend my dried prawns into a powdered form you can put it whole like that but personally i love to blend it into a powdered form like this so while that is done i'll go over and then cut my vegetables that is the scent leaf which is equally called in chowamu in Igbo, efiri in yoruba and once that is cut i will just set that aside too just cut it into little pieces like so it doesn't necessarily be, need to be so uniform but just cut it into little pieces so here is the scent leaf all cut off so after that is done i'll go over and cut the ugu that is the vegetable pumpkin leaves rather i'll go over and cut the pumpkin leaves into little bits too as well so once that is done i'll just set it in the plate and then just set that aside So going back now to our pot of palm fruit extract <laughs> so now i will reintroduce the beef that is the beef and the cow tribe yes so i'll allow it now to to continue its cooking process i think this already simmered for at least 15 to 20 minutes before i added this um beef and all of that yes so once that is done i'll go over and then add the meat stock you can see the little meat stock that came out from it mm -hmm. So once that is done, I'll just stir and then still leave the pot open. Please, when you're making banga stew, don't cover pot. Oh. If, you want, if you want your banga to be banging, don't just leave the pot open. Allow it to do its thing. <laughs> so once that is done, I allow this to simmer for like 20 minutes. Yes, for 20 minutes. I allow this to simmer for 20 minutes. 
so once that is done i'll go over and then add the blended mix that is the crayfish the onion the grain and then the pepper and once that is added i'll just give it a quick stir like so and still allow it to simmer for extra five to ten minutes thereabouts so once that is done like so i'll go over and add the remaining seasoning cubes and then the salt give it a quick stir i know you say ah this lady you like to stir please pardon me oh. i like to stir <laughs> and then i'll add the dried prawns that is the already blended dry prawns it's already in a powdered form like i said you can add it all if you like but i love it in powdered form so once that is added i'll go ahead and then reintroduce the grilled mackerel fish you don't want to introduce it earlier than this because if not it is going to break so once that is done i'll just give it a quick stir like so and then add the vegetables also before adding the vegetables make sure you've adjusted for salt if the need be once the vegetables are added stir and then turn off the heat i usually don't like salt vegetables like this to cook over extra heat because i believe the heat from the pots will do the cooking also i'm trying to retain as much nutritive value as i can once the vegetables are added leave the pots open do not cover the pot because the heat from the pot will kill the color of the leaves. Let it cool a bit before going ahead to cover the pot. This particular recipe of palm fruit stew is usually served with some white rice or yam, most especially white rice. So I went over to serve myself some portions because at this point, hmm, my white rice was already sitting pretty waiting for more <laughs> to devour this sumptuousness <laughs> so i do hope you enjoy watching this video and if you do do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and i do hope you try this recipe if you haven't and tag me with your pictures on instagram until my next video keep cooking and keep living bye